Hello and welcome back and today it's another NAS comparison. I want to compare the brand new QNAP TS251D against the Nimbus Store 2 from Acer Store. Unfortunately I don't have the Nimbus Store 2 in the studio as you can see there with the weird graphic on screen. The reason being just because I don't actually have one in the new office. As you can see I'm still setting up now I've got to tell you that light still needs some work doesn't it. But let's get on with this. Let's talk about these two NASes. The reason being because right now at the start of 2020, you're probably thinking about spending a little bit of money. You're thinking about buying a new NAS. Maybe you're a small business owner or maybe you're a home user that's got a little bit of money and you've got through that horrible cold January with no money and you've thought about treating yourself to something. Or you're a business user that's getting towards the end of your budget year and thinking, oh, I've got this money to spend. Or you're thinking about the start of the next budget year and you've got some cash you want to spend and I get that. So... Why should you choose one of these two NASes? Because neither one of them is the most powerful thing that either brand have put out there for a while, and that's completely understandable. Both of these two NASes are designed to be aimed at the standard NAS user. That is to say, they are designed for people that want to have a NAS device that can give you the best value for money, but also give you real performance. Because there are more cost-effective solutions from both of these brands out there. But these NASes tend to arrive with ARM uh, based CPUs and are designed more for high efficiency and moreover are designed to give you the best value for money. These give you value but they give you value in a way that's designed around the audio giving you true performance and a great standard mark of what you get from network attached storage in 2020. Now the Nimbus Store 2 arrived halfway through, well, I'll say halfway, or two thirds of the way through 2019. And I'll be honest, it blew a lot of us away, myself included especially, just because it gave you an unparalleled amount of hardware, something that up until then, I always kind of pegged the QNAP guys for. They were kind of the lead runners in a lot of that stuff. And then Ace Store came around and arrived with 2.5 GBE affordable um, NAS solutions, the first out there to do it. They pioneered with the new J4000 CPU. No one had done that. And they arrived with HDMI 2.0a in an affordable two bay. They were the first to do that. And this NAS definitely made waves. And the Nimbus Store 2 and 4 series has really, really rocked the boat in terms of the NAS industry. So when it came to this year in 2020, although I don't know if Acer Store is going to be releasing a new 2-bay, probably not because this isn't exactly an old NAS, QNAP have been releasing their new solutions. Um, and their follow-up to their 251B is this one, the 251D. And the first thing, let's get it straight out of the way, is these two NASs are damn similar in terms of hardware. They have a lot in common. In terms of software, less so. But in terms of hardware, they are incredibly similar with their price point being relatively similar. Both of them arriving at around 260 to 270 quid each, means that in terms of what you're spending, and that's without VAT, without hard drives, it's pretty much the same. You're getting the same thing, really, same deal. But after that, things can change a great deal because it's how you use your NAS and what you want from your data that should dictate which one of these two you go for. Because I'm not going to tell you which one of these is best because that just isn't an answer. They've both got their own advantages and disadvantages. But what this is about is after this video, hopefully this will help you decide between them because you'll hear the things you want to hear and hear the things you don't like and then go, well, well I'll go for that one. So, between these two devices, let's talk about them. Now, the Nimbus Store 2 arrives with the Intel J4005, a dual-core based CPU that's 2.0 gigahertz uh, clock speed that can be turboed up to 2.7 gigahertz, and that's a dual-core chip, and that's an Intel Celeron 64-bit architecture processor. So, mwah, lovely stuff. On top of that, it also arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded, and that's sodium memory, the little one, can be upgraded up to 8 gig across two slots officially and unofficially up to 16 but that's up to you whether you want to do that and validate your warranty etc so some great hardware on the inside there what about the qnap well in simple ditto same cpu same memory they're both utilizing that same j4000 cpu the j4005 and 2 gig of ddr4 memory that can be upgraded this is great to hear that should be a standard after the last few years of DDR3 and uh, J2000 and 3000 processors, it's great to see that we've moved into the new area of internal hardware. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're a PC builder or, you know, you know a lot more about CPUs inside computers, you're probably thinking, what, Celeron? Who cares? But you've got to think 
NASA are a 24-7 device. They are on for a much longer than a PC, they are active longer and have sporadic read-write. They have to be more efficient with their energy and power consumption as well as the degradation that can go on components with that much heat being generated. These are designed for the long haul, hence why their hardware is scaled very differently to PCs. So, moving forward from that, let's carry on on the topic of hardware. We can't really distinguish between them in terms of internal hardware yet, can we? So, let's go with the external. Right, so if we start with the QNAT, the external chassis of the QNAT, uh, plastic white chassis on the front, we've got that metallic strip. If I bring that closer to the camera, you've got a USB copy button there. Uh, USB 3 port there on the front, LEDs there um, to give you real-time information about the drives, the network and the health of the device and a power button. The front of the chassis is slid off the front there, there's a click load button on the side, a magnetic front panel and you've got your drives which are click and load drives inside. And the device itself does support up to the latest 16TB Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives and 14TB WD Red hard drives, so plenty of choice for you. The Acer store arrives again. Front mounted USB copy button, USB 3, power buttons, LEDs, removable front panel, plastic click and load trays. Same for the same for the same. So at the moment, this comparison is looking pretty dull, let's be honest. So let's turn these around. We, hopefully that graphic on screen is rotated and we can talk about the reverse of these. Now, things are going to be very, very similar here. Because if I bring that QNAT in, you can already see we've got four USB ports here, which is good, more than what's present on the Nimbus store. But the Nimbus store is USB 3 only, whereas this device here is a combination of USB 3 and USB 2, because both of them support peripheral devices, and you might not need USB 3 for keyboards and mice and stuff like that. The QNAP arrives with a single 1GBE LAN port, and this is where the Nimbus store takes a huge leap into front, because it's got two... 2.5G um, ports. So that's a combination with link aggregation of up to 5 gigabit Ethernet. And although there are a number of ways to upgrade to 251D to that next level in terms of connectivity, those are going to be an additional spend of a card or their USB to 5GBE adapter. So you've got to give Nimbus Store props for that because at that price point, they've included two link aggregated 2.5 GBE ports and given the way that networking is changing and 2.5 and 5 GBE is becoming quite standard along with 10 GBE coming down in price significantly that was a very brave move for them that I think has really pulled it they really pulled it off now the next thing we can talk about is the HDMI port because both of them have an HDMI port present and the HDMI port on the QNAT is 2.0a as is the port on the Nimbus store. Consequently, both of them support 4K of up to 60 frames per second, which is great. And both of them arrive with their own kind of <clears throat> separate parallel running HDMI portal. That is that even though you can access the NAS over the internet and mobile apps, of which both of them have got loads, you can also access both of them by connecting an HDMI port to a TV um, or a monitor or whatever, and then connect a keyboard mouse or using the mobile app that both of them provide or utilizing a Bluetooth remote with a dongle or an infrared remote, and then you can scroll and access all of the applications that can be run on these devices. They both support Plex Media Server, and although I haven't tested this on Plex yet, I expect them to be very similar, and Plex runs very well on the Nimbus Store too. Maybe upgrade the memory to four though, just to be safe. Um, but in terms of that HDMI portal, this is where I've got to give the points to the QNAP, because even though, Nimbus, the Nimbus Store 2 arrived with HDMI 2.0a first, which they did, and they've got the HDMI portal application, HD station on the QNAP. It just gives you more. The applications seem a little, a lot more um, developed. Uh, they're a lot more fluid, certainly, and a number of the applications on the Acer Store do seem to be kind of just web portals, just web tabs to open up on the screen rather than full bespoke apps. They do have full bespoke apps on there, and a number of really good ones, some really good emulator ones too, as well as some Office applications too, and a bunch load of third-party ones, too many in some cases. Um, but you can install lots more apps on their HDMI platform than you can on the QNAP, but the ones that are there don't feel quite as polished. Whereas on the QNAP, you can see a lot of work has gone into a lot of their applications, both the third and um, first party support. 
And the idea that you can run a VM on both of these and connect to them locally with a keyboard, mouse, and HDMI monitor, but this does it in more of a contained app way. Uh, to me, I just like their version more. And also QVR Pro, the surveillance platform on the QNAP, is just a better app both over the network and locally as a standalone server with HDMI keyboard and mouse than Surveillance Center from Acer Store, which although is good, does feel a little dated now and I do think needs a bit of a revamp. QNAP had something similar in the form of Surveillance Station, which they've since uh, moved beyond into QBR Pro. And you get four camera licenses, I believe, with the Acer Store and eight camera licenses on the QNAP. So in terms of surveillance, got to really give it to QNAP there on that one. Now, so coming back to hardware, because I went on a huge tangent there, didn't I? We can talk about this PCIe slot here, because this is another area where the QNAP takes the lead. Because the Nimbus store, although it came forward with a number of the hardware choices in, the, in their solution before QNAP, the one thing they didn't integrate was the PCIe slot. Now, there are arguments on both sides. First and foremost, this device arrives with enhanced LAN, LAN ports already, two of them which should be link aggregated. And the PCIe slot on this device will almost certainly, in most cases, be utilized for uh, a network interface card upgrade, an NIC, and then you will add 10 GBE, 2.5 GBE, or 5 GBE, <clears throat> which would cost you more. But the PCIe slot on this can be used for other things too. You're not limited to that. You can attach M2 NVMe SSD cache cards will allow you to have super fast areas of both cache on the device to increase your speeds or utilize it as raw fast storage. Alternatively, you can utilize it in a combination QM2 card, which allows you to have both a 10 GBE port and NVMe SSD cache for about 170 to 200 quid, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, that's almost the cost of the whole device. But if you upgrade down the line, then it, you can spread that cost. And I'm surprised that Acer Store didn't include a PCIe slot or if they're utilizing that architecture inside for those ports. They kind of committed that now. And given these devices incredibly similar price point, that could be a major deciding factor between you. Because if you're thinking of upgrading to 2.5 GBE, this arrives with it, which is great. And this you'll have to upgrade. But there's a bit more scope of what you can do. I haven't even talked about wireless access cards in that PCIe slot. I've not talked about any of the other number of USB upgrades you can do to that, that slot. There are loads of supported PCIe cards that go inside this device. And it's just another way in which you can get a little bit more from that NAS down the line. And that's really it in terms of hardware between these two devices. Because although they arrive at a very similar price point, as mentioned, the Acer Store kind of gives you it all now. Whereas the QNAP uh, gives you the idea of going, here's everything now, but you can upgrade the way you want to later. And you've really got to look at that in your own way, which one of those stands out for you the most. Now, moving away from hardware, let's go back to the subject of software. Now, Acer Store arrives with the software ADM, their latest version, and this device arrives on a nice gamer style theme. It's like black and red and faded. It's really, really cool looking. Um, and I've run Steam libraries off this device. I've done lots of different software overviews of this, including mobile apps too, and it is a very, very good and competent platform. It feels very fluid. It's not quite as user-friendly as it can be, and there is a there's less first-party apps than you might like. They've got a great number of applications, and all of the standard NAS tasks that you want to perform, from cloud migration to backup locally over to another NAS or to USB, to access all of your media files are all possible on this device. Plex Media Server and other third-party apps like VirtualBox are all possible on this NAS. You are getting a NAS that can do a great deal with its software. And again, I am including snapshot backups. I am including a myriad of different ways to manage your data. And I think you know what's coming. The QNAP one, QTS is just better. QTS arrives with more and far well developed, uh, better developed applications on their software platform. QTS 4.4.1, I mean, let me count the ways. You've got QMaggie, which is, the, you've, well, you've got PhotoStation and QMaggie. PhotoStation is your photo catalog, cataloging and profile building application that lets you view all the photos and learn information about them, which both of them have, Acer Store have, looks good, sounds good, uh, their application series. 
but the QNAP arrives with QMaggie, a facial recognition and thing recognition AI powered application that runs on this device that allows you to catalog photos in a far more smart, uh, smarter way, which is a hell of a way to use the word smart in a sentence and look like a dumbass. But for example, you can upload a decade of photos that you have in your collection to this device. It will go through them and it will tag faces. It will find one person that's been in all the photos and say, who is this name? Jeff. And that's it. From then forward, you can just search for Jeff and find Jeff, just like Facebook. But it also recognizes things, trees, food, places, and it really narrows the field. It won't just say landscape. It will identify individual flowers. It will identify individual trees. It will identify individual foods. And it doesn't read them from the name of the file. It looks at them using AI recognition to help you search. On top of that, you've got applications like Hybrid Backup Sync. And although both of them let you back up to multiple platforms, again, different cloud platforms and synchronized between them, uh, USB, other NASs, cloud platforms, the QNAP app is still the best app. And that's across all the NAS brands to do that. It's user friendly, it's incredibly intuitive and more. On top of that, it also arrives with support of utilizing NAS and cloud data in a better way than we've thought before. For example, utilizing um, hybrid mount and virtual JBOD, you can mount storage from an old NAS to be visible on this as if it's local storage using virtual JBOD. Using hybrid mount, you can use an area of cloud storage from Dropbox, Google Drive, or another NAS and make that storage appear local. So it just appears as another folder on your NAS or on your local machine and synchronizes everything so you can use all of those apps first or third party as if they are on the NAS even if they're remote over the internet or the network using an intelligent area of cache and although both of them take advantage of their own ways with both SSD caching and internal caching with the memory the QNAP seems to do it just that little bit more and that's really what it comes down to I could list off a number of apps from QNAP that Asus or either doesn't have or doesn't have quite the same polished version of, but at that point it may come across as mean. Ultimately, if you're a software buyer, this is the better choice, because right now you've just got a better range of applications, and Acer Store are producing better apps, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them this year in uh, Computex, to see what's going to do after last year's great show. But right now in terms of software, QNAP are winning between these two, and ultimately if you're looking to buy for software, you may err towards this. So once again, I'm not going to tell you which one of these two NASs you should buy because that wouldn't be fair because I'm a different user to you. But think about what you need the NAS for. Think about what I've said in today's video and what vibes most with you and your user case scenario for when you set up your network attached storage device. And remember, although they can both be expanded down the line, they can't both be upgraded in the same way. So think about now and think about the future and which one is what you're thinking the most of right now because it's going to make all the difference really you might never want to upgrade and in which case most of what i've said is utterly irrelevant but we'll see thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this if i've missed any points or areas of comparison that you thought weren't covered sufficiently do let me know in the comments click like if you want to learn more click subscribe to hear more about comparisons in the future and i'll see you next time